All right, so going back um, to this compound now, uh, what would be the charges in this case? This one's a little bit um, harder. Maybe the easiest way to go through this is to, again, just treat these as sulfates. These are sulfates. What's the charge in each sulfate? Negative 2. So what's the overall charge on the sulfates? Negative 6. So what would the charge on the aluminum be? 3, so it would be 6. Yeah. We know that overall these have to be plus 6 to cancel the minus 6. So each individual has to be plus 3. Here you're starting, it starts to, uh, you can start to see why it's helpful to put the groups up above and the individuals down below so we can keep track of all the different numbers. Also, you can figure that out from the periodic table. If you look in the periodic table, aluminum is in the third column from the left. Aluminum is a metal in the third column from the left. Since it's a metal, it tends to lose electrons. It's less electronegative than these. And how many electrons does it tend to lose? Well, since it's in the third column, it tends to lose um, three electrons. Uh, my periodic table is messed up. Here's where aluminum is. All messed up. But anyway, here's aluminum in the 1, 2, 3rd column from the left. Well, that would tend to also tell you this would have a plus 3 charge. So that you could also have figured this out even if you hadn't remembered that sulfates are negative 2. If you think that aluminum tends to lose 3 electrons, and then you could figure out the sulfur separately. <coughs> so since this is still a sulfate ion, these charges should still be the same. The same charges on the sulfate, plus 6 on the sulfur and negative 2 on the oxygen. So this can still add up to negative 2 overall. Any questions? So in that case, you ignore the 3. It's SO4 and then bracket 3. Like you ignore the 3 right there? Uh-oh. Uh, am I getting confused here? Let's try again. So no, I don't think we did ignore it. So remember we said that um, we knew that sulfates had a negative 2 charge each. But because there were three of them, they had a negative six charge total. That's how we got the positive six on this aluminum and the positive three down here. That was one way to figure out the oxidation numbers. The other way to figure out the oxidation numbers, though, is um, you could just remember that the sulfates have negative two charges. And since they, uh, yeah, so then you, how do we know the sulfur is still plus six? Well, we know that each individual sulfate has to be six minus eight to be negative two. So for that, I am ignoring the three because I'm just focusing on each individual sulfate. Okay, uh, but to figure out the aluminum, we did take into account that there were three of these. All right, and finally, what should be the oxidation number on these hydrogens? Zero. Zero. This is one case where we cannot model this as ionic because obviously neither hydrogen is more electronegative than the other hydrogen. It wouldn't make sense to say that one of the hydrogens is taking the electrons from the other hydrogen. So this is the one case where we have to model the bond as covalent even for oxidation numbers. When, two when an element is bound to itself, you assume equal sharing, even for oxidation numbers. When an element is bound to itself, you assume equal sharing. So each of these would have one electron, which is what they started with. So any element bound to itself okay. has, um, has a zero charge. That's the only thing that makes sense. We can't say that each hydrogen has a plus one charge, because then overall it would have a plus two charge, but it's supposed to be neutral. And we can't say that each hydrogen has a negative one charge, because then overall it would have a negative two charge, which would contradict the fact that it's neutral. So we've seen that when a hydrogen is bound with a, a non-metal, it loses electrons and becomes positive one. And when hydrogen is bound to a metal, it gains electrons and becomes negative one. And when hydrogen is bound to itself, it neither gains nor loses electrons, so it stays neutral. Okay, so all of that work was to figure out the oxidation, the oxidizing agent and the reducing agents. So let's figure out which is which here. agent? Yeah. Let's check that. So aluminum here had its oxidation number increase. And from the work we did, we saw that when your oxidation number increases, that makes you the reducing agent. So you're right. The aluminum is the reducing agent. How would I, I would work that out maybe step by step. First of all, whose oxidation numbers are changing? Well, the aluminum's oxidation number is changing. Is the aluminum gaining or losing electrons? Losing. The aluminum is losing electrons. 
That's why it's becoming positive. So is the aluminum being oxidized or reduced? Oxidized. Yeah. If you're losing electrons, you're being oxidized, which means that doesn't mean that you're the oxidizer. It means you're, re you're the reducer, the reducing agent, which is just what you said. Good. So that's half of the problem solved. So who is the oxidizing agent? The H2SO4. Yeah, the H2SO4. This is ambiguous. Sometimes people ask you which molecule is the oxidizing agent, and sometimes you focus on the element that's the oxidizing agent. So we could say this molecule is the oxidizing agent, but which particular element is really being the oxidizing agent here? Hydrogen. It's the hydrogens whose charge is actually changing. So depending on the question, you might be asked here who, which molecule or which, or, which, or which atom is acting as the oxidizing agent. Well, the molecule here that's acting as the oxidizing agent is the H2SO4. In particular, the element that's acting as the oxidizing agent is the hydrogen. To working it out step by step, the hydrogen went from a plus 2, well, each hydrogen went from a plus 1 to a 0 charge. Now, by the way, we should be focusing on the bottom numbers, because what matters is the charge on each individual um, atom. So it's um, gained electrons. It gained electrons because it became less positive, so it must have been reduced, which means it's the oxidizing agent. And of course, each reaction should have one reducing agent and one oxidizing agent. So these are consistent with each other. The aluminum here lost electrons. Who took them? The hydrogen. The hydrogen gained electrons, and who did it take it from? The aluminum. That's how we know this is a redox reaction. Suppose we had done this reaction and none of the elements had had a change in their oxidation numbers. Well, then that wouldn't be a redox reaction. Many reactions are not redox reactions because the oxidation numbers don't change. Question? Um, so you always look at the bottom numbers when you're deciding which one's which. That's right, because you want to know which elements have gained or lost electrons. So you want to focus on the individual elements. Um, that's right. Uh, this was just a thought step. We just had to go through this to figure out the individual charges. Oh, we only wrote this down as a, as a help, as to help us figure out these individual numbers. Generally, we go from the individual number for one element to the group, to another group, to the individual number for another element. For example, here I see that each aluminum is losing three electrons, because it's becoming plus three. And each hydrogen is gaining one electron, because it's going from plus one to zero. All right, so that's how we can identify the oxidizing agent and reducing agent. Of course, you couldn't do that unless you were very familiar with this table as well and knew the difference between oxidizing and reducing agents. This is confusing, so it's good to write out the thought steps step by step, like I did here. All right, and we also had a little practice with assigning oxidation numbers. Uh, like I said, this is not in the chapter on electrochemistry. That's on a, this is in an earlier chapter on uh, page 162 in your textbook. Uh, so uh, your instructor might expect you to have that to have the, uh, remember that from the previous semester, uh, previous term. Does that make any sense? Okay.